Now, before you haters, before you haters come in here and try to talk down, be like, oh, look, talking all that hype rap when you lost. Go back and watch the video. I specifically said I would not be surprised if we lose the game to the Cardinals. Now, why did I say that? Kyler Murray coming home to his hometown area where he is undefeated since a sophomore in high school. And now this man is a whole grown ass man still undefeated on each level he has played football on. What do we know about star players when they go home? They want to show out. They back home. They got to show out. That's where their legend, that's where their legend is. Kyler Murray came to ball. Even as much as under the under pressure he was from our D-line, for which they were chasing him around all game, Kyler Murray came to play, and they came in, what, losing three, four straight? He can't go out like that coming home. So Kyler Murray came in ready to play with a chip on his shoulder. At least one quarterback came ready to play in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I'm not going to come up here and be like, yeah, I'm going to eat my words, blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. I'm not going to do that. Because I stand by what I said last week. I stand by you should fear and be very afraid of the Dallas Cowboys in the playoffs. Now, that being said, I got a list of people I need to go in on. We're going to start with the prime suspect. Numero uno, our $75 million quarterback who is signed to Jordan, the Jordan brand, the GOAT. Now, I know you can't relate basketball to football too much, but Dak Prescott does not have any qualities that Michael Jordan possesses, especially in big games. Dak Prescott is always great to come from behind when everybody has a comfortable lead and you got to come back and you just run out of time. Where is that when we need it? Since he has been drafted in the majority of big time premier marquee matchups, Dak Prescott's ass does not show up to play till it's time till it's too late. Till it's too damn late. We put all that stress and pressure on the defense. And I'm going to give it up to the defense. Yeah, Arizona got a couple of big plays in there. But we went into halftime. It was only 22 to 7. Two touchdowns and some field goals. So the defense did a lot of good things. Now, again, and also real quick, Trevon Diggs. I said last week he has the best ball skills of any defensive back in the league. I didn't say he was the best cover corner. So don't try to twist my words when you see this video and you comment down in the comment section. Oh, did you see your boy did get burned? No, no, no. Look, everybody knows you double move him because he's ultra aggressive. You double move him and you make him think the rest of the game. It's a problem because as a cornerback, if you think too much, you're going to give up plays. Anyways, back to Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott's situational awareness in big games is non-existent. How many passes were batted at the line of scrimmage? So that means the defense is keying on what you're doing. So why did he not adjust his throws? Why did he not, like, is he not able to read the defense and see what they're doing? Yeah, I know, yeah, defenses, NFL defenses will disguise coverage, blah, blah, blah. But if you want to be that dude, if you're going to be a Tom Brady, an Aaron Rodgers, Peyton Manning, 
Pat Mahomes, any one of these great quarterbacks, you have to be able to read the defense and then adjust accordingly. Dak Prescott does not do that. So here I am again, going in on Dak, and I stand by what I said again. If all he has to do, all he has to do is manage the game. Do not turn the ball over. Do not put the defense in bad field position or situations. Manage the game. Play at least three-fourths of what you play like before your calf injury. And the Dallas Cowboys will be a force to reckon with. Because I said I fear no one. I don't fear Tampa Bay. I don't fear the Rams. And I don't fear Green Bay if we see them in the NFC title game. Before that, you got me. But once you see Aaron Rodgers in the championship game for the conference, I don't fear him. So now Green Bay has locked up the one seed. Cool, they're probably gonna rest, whatever. We got a slugfest coming up with Philadelphia next week. Probably gonna lose that one. I don't know, because you know what? Philly wants to get in the playoffs. Philly's looking good. And what have I been preaching all season? Since the preview video. Go watch that, by the way. When we play Philadelphia at the end of the season, we are usually not on our A game. Now, granted, this season we are undefeated in our division, which is a weak-ass division. I will give you that. But Philly has come on strong here at the end. If Dallas would have played like how they played the last, what, eight minutes of the fourth quarter of the entire game, we win that ball game. Not to mention that three points. Greg Zerline, guess what? You ball-headed bitch. It came back to haunt us. Anyway, let's move on to culprit number two. Killing more. What are you calling out here, man? What are you calling? Huh? They, they're talking about this man is going to be up for a head coaching position. I'm telling you right now, if Kellen Moore becomes a head coach, that team will suck ass. That team will suck ass. Mark my words. Kellen Moore is not this grandiose play caller. I even made a video last season calling for that man to be fired. Gone. If there's anybody right now I want to be the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys, damn it, promote Dan Quinn. Get DQ to HC. Do that. Corporate number three. I'm tired of tweeting. I tweet it every week. I've been talking about it for years. Anthony Brown has got to go. If you go back and watch that game, Whenever the Cardinals needed a big play, who did they attack? Outside of that Trevon Diggs, who did they attack? Anthony goddamn Brown. He cannot cover. He has no awareness. Does he watch film? He wants to claim, oh, I thought I told y'all I'm that dude. So you ain't that dude. You are not that dude. I guarantee you, line me up in some cleats. I will guard anybody better than Anthony Brown. Get his ass the F out of there. Please cut him. Take your ass to the CFL. Go to the XFL. Go to the AAFL. Go F yourself. Whatever. I don't care. You don't belong in the NFL. You are atrocious. You suck. You won't say, I said to his face, I don't care. Fuck him. Get his ass out of there. Comfort number four, Connor Williams. You gotta go too. You gotta go. Y'all need to be a package deal. You and Anthony Brown are a package deal to get the hell out of Dallas at the end of the season. Super Bowl or not, you two some bitches gotta go. Y'all are the two reasons we get penalized and get shit happened on us. Connor Williams, if you cannot block, 
It's simple as this. If you cannot block the man in front of you, then you do not belong in the NFL. That's simple. He is literally the weak link of the O-line, but he is such a weak link, put so much stress on Tyron Smith, that it really hurts us. It really does. He's got to go. He is, his ass is, he has got to go. He gets bull rush, swim movie, he's always holding. Like, he be out there lost in the sauce, just like Anthony Brown. I saw a tweet. Shout out to Scooter. Nick Gruber. Gruber, I don't how to say his name. He said, why do we one week look like a Super Bowl contender, but then the following week, we look like we don't even belong in the league? Why is that? Does Dak fold that much under pressure when he plays a winning team? No. You know what it is? Expectations. Because I'm going to give an example. Tampa Bay, first game of the season. Nobody, even I said it. I thought Tampa Bay was going to blow the brakes off of us. Nobody gave Dallas a chance against Tampa Bay. So what does that mean? No expectations. So Dak can go out there, play free. Fly, little birdie. He plays free. But now you have pressure. Expectations. Because if you win out, it's very possible. Very possible you get the one seed. What comes with the one seed? Expectations. If you put any other of these elite quarterbacks on the Cowboys right now, you do not want to see Dallas in the playoffs. I guarantee you do not want to see Dallas in the playoffs. Not with that defense. But we lost. Luckily, we're already in the playoffs. We have our 11 wins. But we shouldn't settle on that. We should not. We should not settle on that. The offense got to get it together. Why does it take to the end of the game to start getting the, and pushing the ball down the field? And these throws Dak is making. Lord have mercy. It's like you're playing on man and all the sliders are put down. And you're playing on all men with the AI sliders all the way up. I don't know, man. I don't know. But like I said, when I started doing this last year, win, lose, or draw, I will come up here and I will answer for my team and give an explanation. I wouldn't, but I will not defend this shitty ass play. Absolutely not. So you haters, this is y'all's week. Let me have it. I can take it. I can dish it like last week, but I can also take it like this week. So go ahead. Let me have it. Give me your best line. Give me your best Cowboys disc. Please. Just know the season ain't over. Any given Sunday. Any given Sunday. Which is one of my favorite movies of all time. Any given Sunday. Anybody can take an L. Anybody. Anybody. But that's all I got to say. If you enjoyed what you heard, or if you're a cowboy hater, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, share the content. Thank y'all so much for coming through. Links to all social media platforms will be down in the description. But my name's Apollo. I'm getting up out of here. Y'all be safe. One love. All the way to God. I'm gonna catch y'all next time, baby. Peace.